Russian elite military units have suffered serious losses during the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Their main task was to eliminate the Ukrainian leadership, reports the national interest. According to the media, the Russian military command intended to use these units to achieve an easy victory in Ukraine. The national interest says that the war in Ukraine is the largest conflict Russia has found itself in since World War II. As such, the Kremlin has thrown everything it has into the fight, including its elite military forces. At the onset of the conflict, the Russian High Command had planned to use its military units to bag an easy victory for the Kremlin. While Russian airborne forces paratroopers were storming the Hostomel airport next to Kiev, Spetsnaz commandos were going after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and other high-ranking Ukrainian officials. The Kremlin wanted to decapitate the Ukrainian command and control structure at the most important point of the conflict and create chaos in its adversary. Much like Moscow's plans, the attempt to take out Zelensky and the Ukrainian leadership failed. Therefore, Russia continued to use elite special forces in the war. They have been seen in battles near Mariupol, Kherson, Lyman, Kharkiv and Kyiv. It is also stated that all but one of the five Special Forces Brigades suffered significant losses by the end of summer. In particular, one of the separate Special Forces Brigades had only 125 personnel active out of 900 deployed. This indicates that the unit lost nearly 90% of its combat personnel. In military terms, a unit that has lost almost 90% of its combat capability is deemed no longer effective and is moved from the line. But the Russian military was not dissuaded and continued to use its elite Spetsnaz forces in the conflict. Although conventional Russian troops spearheaded the three different invasion prongs, north toward Kyiv, south toward Kherson and Odessa, and west toward Kharkiv, the Kremlin deployed Spetsnaz commandos every time the conventional Russian forces faced significant resistance. North Korean television has broadcasted footage of the country's latest giant missile test, with leader Kim Jong-un and his daughter watching. The footage showed a massive transporter erector launcher vehicle, commonly referred to as a TL, setting up for the launch. North Korea's official state news agency KCNA said that the missile flew thousands of kilometers into the sky and into space before falling into the sea east of the country. The images shown by North Korean television of the latest missile test have not been independently verified. On Friday, KCNA identified the missile as Wasong-19 ICBM and called it the world's strongest strategic missile and the perfected weapon system. KCNA said leader Kim Jong-un observed the launch, describing it as an appropriate military action to express North Korea's resolve to respond to its enemies' moves that escalated tensions and threats to North Korea's national security. It said Kim thanked weapons scientists for demonstrating North Korea's matchless strategic nuclear attack capability. South Korea's military earlier said that North Korea could have tested a solid-fueled missile but Friday's KCNA dispatch didn't say what propellant the Wasong-19 ICBM uses. Observers say the color of exhaust flames seen in North Korean media photos on the launch still suggest the new ICBM uses solid fuels. Before Thursday's test, North Korea's most advanced ICBM was known as the Wasong-18 missile which uses solid fuels. Preloaded solid propellants make it easier to move missiles and require much less launch preparation times than liquid propellants that must be fueled before liftoffs. So it's more difficult for opponents to detect launches by solid fuel missiles. In recent years, North Korea has reported steady advancement in its efforts to obtain nuclear-tipped missiles.
조선민주주의인민공화국이 갱신한 새로운 초강력 공격수단 최종 완결판 대륙간 탄도 미사일이 좌태를 드러낼 역사의 시각을 앞둔 발사장은 세계 최강에 도달한 우리 국가와 전쟁 억제력의 과시로서 반공화국 핵 대결 야망에 빛도 있는 가장 조악한 적수들을 전육해 할 전체 국방 과학자들과 전략 미사일 병들의 의지로 용암 마냥 끌어번졌습니다. 전간 천지를 증감하는 괴물과 함께 지구상의 온갖 악과 불의를 다스릴 조선인민의 화라로 치솟는 열적 의기와 적개심을 제어하는 절대적 힘의 실체가 거세찬 화염으로 지면을 눌러 딛고 위압적인 자태를 떠올렸습니다. 발사된 미사일은 최대 정점 고도 7687.5km까지 상승하며 거리 1001.2km를 5156초간 비행하여 조선동해 공해상 예정 목표 수역에 탄착됐습니다. 시험 발사는 주변 국가들의 안전에 그 어떤 부정적 영향도 주지 않았습니다. 적을 다스릴 수 있고 억제할 수 있는 강력한 힘으로 보수하는 평화만이 국방과학 집단과 전략 미사일 병들은 주체 혁명의 경기창을 더욱 불필 곳으로 강력하게 다져나가며 국가의 핵 대응 태세를 강화하기 위한 성스러운 투쟁에 용기 백배 헌신 분투에 나갈 불같은 교리를 다짐했습니다. 노스 코리아 테스트 론치드 a suspected new long range missile designed to strike the continental US on Thursday. The specific long-range missile capabilities North Korea was testing were not known, but the launch was likely meant to grab American attention ahead of the U.S. election Tuesday. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said it detected a ballistic missile launch from North Korea's capital region around 7.10 a.m. and that the weapon flew toward the waters between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. It said the weapon was launched on a high angle and it was suspected of being a long-range ballistic missile. Japanese Defense Minister Gen Nakatani told reporters that a preliminary examination shows the launch could involve a new missile, citing its flight duration of 1 hour and 26 minutes, which he said is the longest for a North Korean missile test. He said the missile landed in waters outside of the Japanese exclusive economic zone but condemned North Korea's nuclear and missile development for threatening the safety of Japan and the international community. South Korea and Japan said they are closely coordinating with the U.S. about the North Korean launch. The United States described the weapon as an intercontinental ballistic missile and condemned North Korea for the launch, saying it violated UN Security Council resolutions and, needlessly, risked raising tensions. North Korea last test-fired an intercontinental ballistic missile in December 2023, when it launched the solid-fueled Wasong-18. はい、おはようございます。